What's up, people? How's everybody doing? Thank you for joining me. Hello, 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 hello. So there's some cool shit you can do um, with live streams and stuff and just with these external mixers in general. So I figured I'd hook up a bunch of toys and kind of give you guys some examples and, you know, some things to do and whatnot. So I'm basically today. Thank you. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you all for joining me. Um, so basically, we're going to go over how to properly hook up an external mixer. If you see my last video, um, I talked about all you know, how I think it's a really good idea. Every DJ, every DJ should have one. I'm basically going live off the cuff. Honestly, if I could be honest with you guys, I, um, I went to you know, film this video and it just seemed fucking boring. I, I just didn't, I, I didn't, I was like, this is something I could just do live and just show you and actually, you know what I mean? Because like, I didn't like the production value of showing you live and everything when I was trying to film it. Like it just seemed like kind of dumb. I just like, I just do this live. Does that make sense? That's why I didn't do a video on this. I don't know. I just, and it's a good opportunity. I want to test out all this live stuff. And, um, you know, I, I never go live on YouTube, something I should do more often, you know, and kind of talk to you guys and answer questions and just go over different stuff off the cuff. So I think it'll be a different little change to do, something to do every once in a while. So without further ado, I'm going to go over kind of everything. Um, so I have two angles here. So I have one camera angle here uh, at my little setup and whatnot. And then I got another one where I can kind of show you guys kind of how everything works. So uh, I'm going to switch this other camera angle. I'll move this thing over here. So, welcome to my little office, abode, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Shaky camera over here. So I essentially... happening all right and listen off the cuff i'll literally show you guys what that was too and teach you so it doesn't happen to you guys either here hold on so this is why we're going live and off the cuff i'm going to show you guys uh what happened there and how to avoid that in the future i'm a dumbass anyway let's switch this camera let me show you my whole setup and stuff we should be good to go now all right so essentially um i have my whole rcf mixer here Got it hooked up to my main streaming computer. As you can see, look, it's like Inception, right? Um, everything hooked up through my mixer. Everything that I have hooked up uh, from like my turntables to the mixer to like the output speakers here, these monitors, um, everything is basically mirrored exactly like I would do a private event setup. So it's basically the same thing. Um, essentially just bigger speakers, you know what I mean? And the only other thing we're adding to it is the streaming computer, which we'll talk about in a second. So this works the same as for live streams uh, as it does for like my live setup when I do weddings and stuff. Um, so everything starts with your setup. So you either have your turntables, I have, um, you know, or a controller, whatever. Um, you go off your main mixer. For the live stream, what I do is I have an RCA out that goes out, right? So there's an RCA out out of the master, and the RCA goes to a dual quarter inch, as you can see right here. So like a dual quarter inch there. Um, that goes to a main channel, right? So I just picked channel five, six. Fuck it, right? Great channel. And that's your main DJ channel. So that's how you hook up your mixer to that. To do an output into your speakers, I basically do these two XLRs here, which is out the main output of the mixer there. Those XLR speakers go, or those XLR wires go out 
into my main speakers, right and left. And that does the output. So mixer in there, speakers out there. Same thing with the piano. The piano I got a quarter inch out, quarter inch in. I just hooked it up mono because I only had one. So just so you know, you could do a mono, which is just the left, or stereo right and left. These two ports here, like these two channels, um, typically are for my microphone. Uh, they have a little added features. The red knob there is a compression knob. So basically when you get loud for intros, when you're like introducing the bride and groom and shit, do 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 no, Mr. I missed it. Like when you get louder and you do that thing that we all do, you can adjust that. So basically you bring that compression up a little bit and it'll keep your voice level and won't let your voice peak on the mic. Um, now, the thing, now the thing with um, uh, live streams and stuff is I, I want to have like an ability to basically turn my mic on, turn my mic off, like on the fly, not having to like reach on this mixer. So I actually had this mic hooked up right through my S9 because I'm not going through a loud PA system. I really don't need anything crazy. So I just figured, you know, for a live stream, if I'm just gonna DJ live or whatever, I'll have it hooked up through here. I could just be like, bam, uh, 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 and turn it off like that anytime I need to turn it off, right? So that's for that. Now, obviously, if you see my video, one of the main reasons why you want to have a mixer like this, you want to run the microphones through the mixer. Um, you're going to get, you're going to be able to ring out the mics correctly. You're going to have the compression knobs there, like I just explained. Um, same thing here. If you can see this. So that basically uh, limits any, any sound waves under 80 hertz, uh, which greatly reduces feedback and stuff. So you basically, anytime you put a mic in, you want to push those buttons in and it will reduce your feedback like big time. Now, when it comes to cables, by the way, um, so when, you know, when I'm doing my live stream, you know, I got a basic, I think it's a Hosa cable, you know, dual quarter inch to RCA out for this. Nice and easy, you know, whatever. If it dies, it dies, you know, what's the worst that can happen? When it comes to live events, though, I do recommend, like, kind of investing in really good cables. So, basically, let me bring this mic down and shit. I want to sit down. Sitting my ass down. Can you guys see me? What's up? Um, so, ba so basically, when it comes to, you know, hooking up my main setup, um, I have – I try and use the best cables that I can afford. You know, I would do that. You know, they make crazy fucking – you could do, like, a gold-plated, you know, uh, uh, what do they go? Uh, Megamis and all them. They're, like, crazy. Like, I don't have those. It's, like, a goal of mine, but, you know, it's kind of, you know, $150 a cable. It's kind of crazy. But you want to – because it's going to be, you know, kind of your main rig and you don't want anything to go wrong, I highly recommend investing in the best cables you can afford for this. Um, with that being said, I usually go, uh, uh, two dual quarter inch to, um, dual XLR for my main one, just cause it's like, it's balanced and it's like legit and you know what I mean? So that, that's what I would recommend for your main setup. As far as like my main setup goes, I just have like a little rack, you know, and I just basically, um, Velcroed this thing into a rack and hooked it all up and it just stays hooked up. You know what I mean? So I just, when I go set up, I plug everything in, bam, bam, it's just kind of all there. So you can get little racks, you can get bigger racks, depends what you want in there and stuff. Um, Rick Webb actually did a great video, shout out to Rick Webb, on the rack and basically everything you can uh, um, like do with it and all kinds of stuff. He, I think it was like a, I don't know, it was a big ass rack like on wheels and stuff. So that's a cool thing, definitely consider like his video, he'll kind of explain like, he geeks out with like how to set all that stuff up and whatnot. So there's different ways that you can like transport the mixer and everything. But essentially, right, you just you go from from your controller out to the mixer on a on a channel. The uh, the mixer's main outs go out to speakers, and then you use the different channels for anything you need. So I got one on piano, I got two microphone inputs here, and then extra inputs for anything you need throughout the night. Now, it, as far as like a uh, videographer, right? You want to like hook up to a videographer. Let me show you that. What we got here? Yeah, Magami. Mono price cables. See, they're good for your live stream, but not for like, uh, you know, <laughs> the main shit. You gotta, I mean, they're, they, they claim them for life, but I've had them die on me though, definitely. So, um, as far as talking about like a videographer and stuff, what you wanna do is, is you wanna do your aux output right here. So if you guys can see that, your aux output. That's gonna be like the main output. And that aux runs right off your aux green knob here. 
So that'll be like the videographer's volume. So when I hook into the videographer, you, you could do the same thing with the phones too. So like the phones level, it's another one. So if you need that, if you need multiple outputs, you could do phone because it has its own individual thing. But the cool thing about using the aux is you can decide what, go, what channels go into the aux, right? So if you use the aux, uh, the video offer plugs directly into that. Then you, then you test it like, Hey, do you need more volume? And then you bring this up until he has a good signal and then bam, he or she is good. Then you can also say, all right, well, do you want the mics in it? Okay. Or do you want just mic one and not mic two? Then I turn off mic two. Oh, you don't want my piano. You don't want to hear my shitty piano playing. All right. I'll turn off the piano. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can, you can adjust what goes through there per channel. So it's super, super customizable. So a realistic thing would be like um, a lot of times a videographer will want only the, the you, only your intros, right? Only you talking on the mic when you're doing your introductions, no music. And then they just want the speeches. So I'll just do the two mics, but then I'll turn off um, the music. And then bam, he has a clean mic feed and that's all he gets. So if he wants to use your voice in intros, you're saying, no, mister, and you're doing the thing, right? You, he can just have that clean as hell uh, without music, he can just have that. I don't know why that fucking happened. He, he can just have that clean as hell without music. And then, uh, he can use that in his video. And then plus later on for the speeches, he'll be Gucci with the speeches. So that's pretty cool. So that's basically what I, what I use for that. Um, and you can also, as far as like, uh, you know, uh, uh for your, uh, what you call it, what the hell is that shit called? Like a monitor out, same thing. You could do like a phones out or, um, or the aux output, if, you, if you're not using a videographer or whatever, they all work the same exact way, and they have individual controls, and that's when you can take your mic out as well, so you don't have that in your monitor. So, switch back to here. So as far as, um, sorry, I forgot I got to talk into this thing. So, as far as, Setting your volumes. A lot of people ask about setting my volumes. I did a video about how to set your knobs, and I talked about proper gain structure and shit like that. And that's essentially what you want, what you want to do with all these mixers. You basically, um, when you're setting something, right, you basically start when it's off. So if I can do it, can you guys see here? You can kind of see there. Maybe I could turn this shit. Essentially, you start with, you start with the volume faders off. You play a song, right? Then you raise your gain up until you get to about like yellow. Right when you hit the yellow, right? You hit the yellow, that's about where you want your gain to be. And then from there, you can. And you can bring your volume all the way up and that's basically where you wanna be. So at the mixer part of it, that's basically what I do. I bring my gains up right to where I hit about yellow and then like, you know, dinner time might be here, right? But then you slowly bring it up, slowly bring it up. And then when you're bumping for dancing, all the way up, right? And then you're good. So that's all you need from your mixer because you want to have a really clean sound, clean signal from your mixer. You don't want to go deep into the yellow at all. You just want to keep it right there. All your headrooms are going to come from your external mixer. You do the exact same thing with your external mixer. You turn all the volumes all the way down, okay? And then you bring your gain up while the music's playing up until you get about yellow. And then you use your volumes to adjust it accordingly. So earlier in the night, you know, you might be, you know, a certain, but if you need a little more headroom later, then you can crank it up on this mixer. And the amount of headroom you get, it's just like insane. Crystal clear too, because it's a clean signal coming from the Pioneer and it's going direct into your external mixer and then it's processing through the external mixer and it's just, it's crispy as shit. So I don't care what kind, I don't care if you have Behringer speakers. No offense if you have Behringer speaker. I should I don't care if you have alto speakers, it'll still, like, you'll get the absolute best out of any speaker, any products that you're using, like 100%. It's literally night and day. Um, and when it comes to the microphones, too, you have the flexibility of, you know, the, the high mids, the lows, the, the compression, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the high pass filter, all those different things that you can set on the microphones to kind of ring them out correctly so you prevent feedback but you're also sounding really good and it's coming across the music the right way and and all that stuff um the one thing this mixer doesn't have is uh talk over so like like the s9 has it where you turn the talk over mode on and then it'll lower the music what? yo it went in reverse like a led zeppelin album <laughs> check one two one two one two and then it like 
and then and then it like automatically lowers the music for you. I just I don't like that. I think it's like it's always inaccurate and it sounds like shit. And like I'd rather just like lower it myself or. You know, JSG taught me an old trick. He said, like, just to lower the mids, make like a vocal sandwich. You know, you sandwich your vocals in the mids, right in between the highs and the lows. You keep your highs and your lows at the 50, right? You know, at the hot, you know, the what you call it, the 12 o'clock. And then you just lower your mids when you talk. You make a little vocal sandwich, right? You know, so um, I'd rather do it like by hand than uh, have the mixer do it. So I'm not really too mad about that, not having that feature. Um, so as far as live streaming in general, I use an app called eCam Live. Some people use OBS. Some people use StreamYard. I mean, tomato, tomato. I don't have, I'm not going to tell you what's better. I have no clue. I just really like this one. So I can show you how this works. So basically, this is eCam Live. Holy inception. Holy shit. I got to do this in an angle. Look at that. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> All right. I'm going to try it from, oh, this is so weird because it's like recording the record. Anyway, it's an app. I can switch between different streams, right? So look, I have my mainstream. So mainstream's gonna go to me, bang. I got my YouTube live stream countdown that already went down, bang. And then I got my iPad stream, a uh, bang. See, so I can switch really quick. Um, as far as audio and stuff, I can basically uh, select you know, what I wanna use. So with these mixers, the only other, what, what I meant to talk about by the way, the only other thing uh, that you have to do different than your live setup would be to just hook this mixer up via USB to your streaming computer. So I have a separate streaming computer, obviously it's a separate MacBook uh, just for this. I have the Ecamm Live on it and I hook this mixer up via USB to this laptop. It recognizes it as a USB audio codec, plug and play, literally like plug and play and you're good. Um, and then you select that as your sound. Before when I was having that buzzing when I fucked up, that was because the iPad sound was on and it was interfering. You got to mute everything else, really, you know, all the sounds right here. Make sure everything's muted except for right here. That way you're controlling all the sound. So because at all the sound that's going into this, I can level out here and all the sound that's going into this, all is going through this mixer, then I just use this mixer to level everything out. And then as long as this stays in the green, like as long as it stays in the green right here, then I'm good to go. Same thing with the piano. Like everything, like everything like works bang, like right on the computer. Um, you could set scenes with this. I mean, there's so much. You could take Skype calls with this. I mean, it's crazy. The amount of, like, shit you can do with this program is, like, insane. So I didn't really dive into, like, so deep. Like, I'm not an expert on this program at all. I just know how to use, like, different ca camera angles. You know, you set your little scenes. I know how to do a little countdown at the beginning. The countdown's built into the program. So you just select when you want it to end, and it does its own countdown. That's pretty cool, you know? So you look fancy, and you can go on and kind of, like, um, you know, build viewers ahead of time, you know, get people, you know, so it's not like you're just going on and you're getting your shit together. Like, I'm just chilling here. I'm ready to go, you know? Um, and yeah. So I guess, uh, I miss anything. I don't know. Hit me up in the chats. Let's talk people. I'll answer some questions. Got any requests? Look what we got. All right. What's up, David Gonzalez? DJ Rabio. Nestor. Taz. Mike Jones. Oh, shit. That's another thing with this program. You see, I can do the little comments on here. See, David says it sounds good. I appreciate you, David. Appreciate you. He said, nope. He said louder. See, I didn't even hear that shit. See, I never went live on YouTube before, so I also realized that every streaming service is kind of different too. So you kind of got to like adjust stuff and like plug and play and whatnot when you do this. But once you have everything set, everything saves within the program too. So you're pretty much Gucci. Now, Rick is a big drive rack guy. Um, those things are like complicated as shit to, to set. And But the cool thing is you can set like by room, right? So you can have... Like the PA, um, I used to have the same one he has, and I would have settings for each room. So like if you could do venues often, you can set like a drive rack to that room and have everything, like all the audio. You can literally geek out and uh, have everything set like perfect. But it was just so complicated for me. And like if it wasn't a room that I had preset, resetting it up or like setting it all up from scratch would take me so long. And uh, so I, I had like some basic sound, like basic, you know, wedding setups like wedding settings and i would just put on the wedding setting and then go and 
I don't know. So I kind of like got away from the drive rack. I just, you know, I dialed everything in. And especially when I got the RCF one, because I have RCF speakers, you know, it was literally dialed in for it. Like it just, the speaker sounded so good with the mixer. So I didn't, I had to do very little tuning to it at all. So that's kind of why I stuck with that. But yeah, Rick's the one I mentioned too, um, as far as like build, uh, building in an external mixer, you know, any of those builds and stuff, he geeks out with that stuff. He's got some crazy videos online, so definitely check out his shit. Um, Rick had White Claw tonight. I'm very proud of you. He came live as like virtual. Rick, go fuck yourself. Okay, go fuck yourself. I don't, there's no, there, what do you mean? Uh, there's no, it's not like virtual. There, there's no way e -cam is as bad as virtual DJ. There's no fucking way. Um, yeah, so Angel, hooking cameras up, basically, it's a USB, um, the, when you hook up a camera, it's just a USB to the computer, and that's it. Um, now, if you want a clean audio feed, there's, like, apps you can get, there's a Epoch Cam, it's E-P-O-C Cam, um, it's an app you can download, and it basically gives you a clean video feed on your camera, so you don't see, like, you know, how much battery you got left and shit, like, the stuff that goes on top. But um, but no, it's literally plug and play with OBS or um, StreamYard or uh, or Ecamm, whatever you use. You know, you just plug your camera into it. You just exit out of iTunes because that always pops up, and then your camera um will work like automatically. It's really easy with iPhones. That is, I, I never tried it with an Android, but with iPhones, it's super easy. Um, Taz, I'm a mixer guy. Rick Webb is a drive rack guy. We'll have um. We'll, we'll, we'll go live and, and have, a, have a duel. We'll have a duel. We'll talk about all that. What's spam? Well, if you looked at the chat, that be a start. Steph is the go of chat. No. What's spam? I don't see shit about spam other than the fucking White Claw com or the virtual DJ comment. I made this video in 2005. Oh, no. Go fuck yourself, Rick. Holy shit. Thank you. Right? He's talking shit. Oh, Steph's pissed. You pissed off Steph, Rick. <laughs> you pissed off Steph. She's she's squeaking in the other room. Uh, on a stand next to you when you play. What do you mean on a stand, Nestor? What do you mean? Get back to me. Did Amazon ever ship you the order of the rash cream you've been waiting on? No demand hasn't come in yet. Um, I'm sitting on a donut right now. I'm sitting on a donut right now. <laughs> Fuck Rick Webb, fuck Rick Webb, fuck Rick Webb, he's so dumb. Anyway, so I do use the uh, effects option sometimes. Basically, that's made, um, see, I'm looking at the thing. Basically, um, that's made uh, to take out the top end or low end of your speakers, depending on where you're playing. So what I would use that for is like, so if you're in a really big place with like really high ceilings and stuff, I would go to large hall, which is like the second option. Um, and it, and it, it puts more into the low end, I believe. So it fills the room more. Same thing if you're like doing an event outside. Uh, you definitely want to, there's different options in there for like outdoor events and stuff like that. Because when you're just throwing across the field, you're just throwing sound like all the way across the field far as shit. You know, you're going to want to set your speakers a little differently rather than if you're in like a small space and, uh, and you know, something with like walls and stuff. So that's basically what that's for. It's just like different like environments. But generally speaking, you know, for most halls, you're going to, you know, or most venues or whatever, you're going to keep it on like one or two if you're in a real big ass place. Yo, shout out to Renee, 12 years old. Play some piano. I'm just messing 10 claws. Deep. 10 claws deep. Holy shit. Rick is white girl wasted right now. And yes, I used to play drums too. I don't have drums anymore, Angel, so I can't play. It sucks. I got to get a set. I miss playing so bad. Hell yeah. So, um... So ask me a question, guys. Ask me anything. I'll chill for a little bit. I guess I went through this shit kind of quick, as I always do. I don't know. So um, my setup for weddings is basically I have, uh, I have a little rack that has the mixer and everything in it, and I keep that behind my facade. 
And then I have another set of like turntables that's in a furniture piece. Like it's in one of the hoer board, like kind of all built in and that goes in front of me. Um, so I'll have the furniture in front of the facade and the facade behind me will cover like, you know, the sound and stuff like that. So I basically set the sound and I'm usually pretty good. Um, I don't have to go like if, if, if I get to a point where I need more headroom, you know, for some for whatever reason, I was off that much. Then I just run to the back and like, you know, turn myself up a little bit or I'll tell Santi like I have my sister, you know, Santi's always, always with me and he'll turn it up or whatever. Um, but usually you kind of set and forget it for the night. Same thing with the mics and stuff, except for like when you do speeches. But then when you do speeches, you know, I'll have like either Santi or myself will be on the, um, you know, the, the mic volume to, you know, in case they're loud or in case they like hold it at their belly button. I hate that shit. So right now I have my main level. Um, Ray asked what, where my levels are at. So right now my main level is at like two. I usually keep my main level around like two um, the, for like my main uh, level for the whole mixer. I can show you guys right here. So it's like two o'clock right here. And then for my DJ channel, same thing. It's kind of like 1.30. 130. That would be I'm um, so fucking dumb. One o'clock for uh for the main channel here. And this seems to be good. So like we're not like you see right where I'm at? Like I'm just maybe touching yellow a little bit. That's right where you want to be, you know? And it, it literally sounds perfect. So you can't like you're not like distorting at all or whatever. So you're not distorting or whatever. Thank you, evolving events. And that and that and this is what a pop filter. I couldn't find my pop filter. I was like, I better let me know if I hit a P too hard. Because <laughs> I I do have those pop filters. Like I use them for ceremonies and like I would use it in this situation, but couldn't find it. And I did have a, I do have another like the mic I use to record videos and stuff. I could have used that. I thought about it, but it kind of looks like a dick. I can't find it. Where'd I put it? See, this is the mic I use to record videos. It's a boom mic, but it kind of looks like a dick, and I feel weird talking into it, to be honest with you. And I, and, and, Pete, and you got Rick here with 10, 10 white claws deep. If I'm talking into a dick, holy shit, he's just going to, the microphone's a dick. Like, that's, all, that's all the comments are going to be. So I didn't, um, I didn't use this one. It probably would have been really smooth with this, but, you know, no liking. What quarantine DJs on Wednesday? Sorry, I suck. I have no idea what's going on. Tell me about it, David. Isn't it SM58 day to show? No. Is it SM58 day? That's what I'm using. Look at that. Dude, SM58s are like the best mic. Like the, You could throw this down a flight of steps and it would work. Like I swear to God, they, they're animals. They're tanks. There's no destroying these mics. Is it funny when you're a DJ and you're explaining something and you stare at the camera with your eyes wide open? <laughs> oh, it is funny. Uh, yeah. Well, part of it is I have a bright ass light in my face. So like, I don't know how either I'm going to look like this or I'm going to look like this and just deal with the light, you know? So it's kind of partly that. And the other part is, I don't know. I did notice I don't blink a lot in my videos and I really do blink in real life. I just maybe, I think that, you know what I think it is? I think that when I'm thinking of a thought, you know, and I'm like, you fucking yelling at the camera, I think that I don't have enough brain capacity to blink as well. So, like, that's just one of the things I give up to let that thought out. And then once the thought's out, then I'll, like, blink. I don't know. Wait, once a Wednesday chat? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Are you talking about the Wednesday chat where like Rick and all the other YouTubers like chat without me and then don't invite me to the chat at all? You're talking about that chat that I'm never invited to because I'm not a cool enough YouTuber yet? Yeah, I, I know exactly what chat you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I watch it though. I watch it and, you know, you know, watch it. <laughs> I don't troll though. I just watch it in the background. Support. King of staring contest. Hell yeah. Hashtag no blinks. Uh, so for intros, uh, I have um, a beta 58. So I use all beta 58s at my weddings and stuff. Um, 
They're, uh, they're super cardioids, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they're super cardioids. So they, they're more sensitive. So the heads on, it's basically this mic only with a different head or a different whatever. Uh, it's got like the blue stripe around it. I don't know. All I know is it picks up people way better than the SM58s. And the, I mean, like I said, these are workhorses. These are great. But like, you know, these are great when you talk into them like right here. You know, when you're doing a speech or if you if you're, you know, like you have people doing speeches or if you're doing a ceremony, you know, production for a ceremony, you got an officiant there. They never talk right here in the mic. They're always right here. OK, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean? And they never project their voice or they'll hold it down by their dicks for no reason. And then you can't hear them. So uh, using a beta 58 with the super cardioid, it picks it up a lot better. And, you know, you have a better shot of, you know, actually people being able to hear them in those stupid ass situations. So that's why I would use beta 58s. What's up, David? Uh, we have two opening auditions starting Sunday. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Sounds good. Sign me up, Rick. I guess I'll audition. I'll do my best. All right. When, when doing live sets for OBS, and it's the best video changer. Uh, when doing live sets, look for OBS, and it's the best video changer. How do you... Percentage from live streams differ from live events. The only difference between my live stream sets and my live events is that I'm hooking my uh, my computer. My I have a live stream separate. I have a separate computer for live streaming, and I have to hook up my external mixer via USB to that computer. Everything else is the same. Oh, and and I, and I do have my mic through my S9 for the live streams, only because I like the the turn off button here. The, uh, 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 so I can turn it off whenever I need to turn it off. You know. Um, it's just easier because like otherwise you, you leave it on you could get an echo and it could sound like shit and you know you're jamming you're doing your set and you forget your mics on so it's just easier for me to just flip this whole thing thing because um, typically I'll have this mixer underneath my table and whatnot kind of like set it and forget it sort of thing so that's the only reason why I do that but um, you know for live setup of course all all everything goes through the external mixer and then uh, you're just without the live streaming computer and that's it everything else is the same. So mics for ceremony, I use a um, a J Mix Eight, an RCF J Mix Eight. It has a like a, a it has a mixer built into it, so kind of like a kind of external mixer, like multiple channels and everything, like built into the thing. And I hook my mic directly into that and uh, run my ceremony that way. I guess I should say the question before I answer it. David asked how I hook up my mic for a ceremony. So yeah, so with the J Mix Eight, it's a column array speaker. You got the uh, twelve inch sub and then the uh, the column array top. And uh, it's got the built-in mixer, and the, the mic goes direct in, the music goes direct in, and I'm good to go. Uh, outdoor ceremonies, I use a wired mic. I don't give a fuck. I'm not risking it. it, it I've had too many cut out. It, it, they have weird wa radio waves in Jersey. You're by too many beaches and shores and boats and, 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 and aliens. We got aliens here. We got all kinds of weird shit. I don't know. You just never know what's going to make it cut out. And there's nothing worse than your mic cutting out in the middle of the ceremony. That's how you start out your day. Every All 150 people turn around and look at you, you know, like... You know what I mean? So never again. Um, so outdoors, I do a wired. Indoors, I have a wireless um, uh, uh, Beta 58. And same thing with in, uh, my wired is a Beta 58 as well. So just I stick with the same kind of head and whatnot. Sing a song about you, Renee. I, you got to take me out to dinner first, Renee, before you get a song. Rick bought me breakfast one time. So they don't talk into the mic and look at DJs. I don't know what that means. What's your? Who's your top five favorite DJs live streaming sets lately? DJ Caution is killing it. DJ Demand's okay. Um, Aiden Scott has a cool live set. Michael John with uh, um, uh, DJ Experts. They have a really cool live set, like green screens and shit. They do like crazy stuff, like steady. Trying to think who else, you know. And I, I mean, I'm not gonna say like SE is my favorite, but you know, we we've been doing our thing too. We've been doing our thing too. Oh yeah, and then the films by um, films by Jay has a sick live stream. I was on there a couple weeks ago. He's killing it. It's like every other Saturday. I think he did a Cinco de Mayo, but I think he does every other Saturday and does a stream fest. So that's really dope too. All right, what we got? Uh, oh, my God. I thought I was the only one who had those issue jersey problems. No, yeah, no. Wired all the way if you're outdoors. 
wait, if you do wired, where do you set up the speaker? I set up the speaker. Well, I, I you, if I do wired, I'll run a hundred feet of XLR. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? You just run that shit. Especially if it's like a beach, you just hide in the sand. Um, it just depends on the setup, but I, I put the speaker as far away as possible. I'm not trying to be in any pictures, so I'll put it all the way to the side or, you know, behind the crowd if I can reach or, you know, wherever I can to kind of like blend in. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I usually use about like a hundred feet of XLR. So it's all the way there. You don't have to worry about a cutting out. You don't have to worry about nothing. The, the, the mics I use don't have an on and off switch. So that can't fuck up. There's just no, there's literally just, it's bulletproof, literally bulletproof, hundred percent bulletproof. You don't have to worry about shit. Honest question, you use XLR to quarter inch. Any difference in quality if you keep it uh, XLR to XLR? Or is, it, uh, uh, is, or is it your preference? I've been using RCA to RCA for years, but thinking of changing. Um, well, so when, when it comes to these mixers, these external mixers, your main outputs are going to be, um, you can, no, I don't even think with this one. Yeah, no, you can do RCA in here or quarter inch. That's like your, so it's RCA, I keep, <laughs> um, it's RCA or quarter inch um, input in these. You can't do XLR input. Only output would be XLR. So your output would be XLR into the speakers would be XLR cables. So it's either XLR to quarter inch or RCA to quarter inch or RCA to RCA. The only ways you can kind of go. Um, I think the most heavy duty, like legit cables are XLR to quarter inch. They make like really legit, like it's, they're like $80, a hundred bucks for like a, not that long of one, but, um, but they're legit. They're, they're no joke. They're not going to die on you. You know, they're made for to, they're made for like installs and shit, you know, just for, if they're not made to be unplugged and plugged back in, they're made to just, you plug them in you forget about them. So, uh, is demand a good DJ D DJ demand can throw down. He could throw down. So can Buck Rogers. You're right, Elf. Buck Rogers is is an is a lunatic. He kills that shit. I'm setting my live set tonight now. Actually, oh shit, Rick Webb's Rick Webb's gonna go drunk live later tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever played with Tractor and Stream Files? Nope, never have. Don't know shit about it to be honest with you. Love your vids, DJ Nick Webb. Yeah, I just finished writing a program that will take regular MP3 and split them out to working stems i think i know what that means all the stem that's pretty crazy yeah so it's like all the different parts of the song right stems i don't know. i don't produce music I'm, I'm just i'm slowly getting i don't know learning about that shit all right favorite type of music to play at a wedding matt asks um I don't know. I don't think I have. I mean, I, I, I just don't like playing the same shit all the time. That's probably what. So like my favorite thing to do at weddings is to always try and play something like just different, like week, week to week. Just keep it fresh. You know, if I play kind of the same stuff, I get a, uh, you know, I get bored. I just I just get bored. I, 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 uh, I don't get the same satisfaction. I, I the, 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 the I get the best satisfaction when like I play a song for like the first time or the first time in a while and it works. You know, and you get the new ooh, you know, you play the song and the whole crowd goes, ooh, you know, like that's where I get my satisfaction. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, I try and like just switch it up. So I got like a, I don't know if you've seen it, like I have crate videos and stuff, um, I have really detailed crates so I can, you know, kind of always try and play something different and whatnot. So, uh, says BD Williams said, thank you. Thank you. Five stakes for a song, and my DJ name is DJ RC3. Stakes? What do you mean, stakes? My man is bartering with me live on YouTube right now. He's bartering with me. He wants a song about him. Mm -mm -mm. Um, oh, and by the way, I am going live on Saturday um, at 7 o'clock through SCE. We're doing like our live stream every Saturday. So I'm, uh, I'm the opening DJ. I'm doing an hour set from 7 to 8. So that'll be on like Facebook and Twitch and all that. I'll share the links on my stuff. So if you guys want to see me there, I'll be playing some opening vibes. I'll be in my uh, bar open folder. Um, yeah, probably never. All right, guys, I'm probably going to be wrapping it up in about two minutes or so. Let me know. Um, if you have any other questions about how I hook stuff up and whatnot, I'm also going to be posting uh, this video on YouTube, so it's going to be there forever. So you guys can always watch it back and check it out and whatnot.
I should do like I want to do like a, a like a set. It's like I don't know how to incorporate it yet. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. But I want to do like a like a piano DJ set. Some fucking how I don't know how to do it though. I really haven't. Other than like starting a song and then starting it on a record, I don't know anything else to do. I can't think of nothing. Uh, uh, like I don't know. I just can't think of nothing to play. Like no, n- nothing. Like I can't think of any ideas to like make it creative and whatnot. You know, demand, I have no idea how to record. Well, um, one thing, I mean, I know how I would do it. There's a way to record. So as far as recording sets and stuff when you're streaming live, so you can obviously record it in Serato, hit the record button, you're good. Um, That's the only downfall about having your mic hooked up through your mixer. So if your mic's hooked up through your mixer, Serato's going to pick that up when you record. So you're going to hear yourself because, you know, we kind of all talk more on the mic when we live stream and stuff. So it might get annoying if you listen in that back. If you're not watching it live, you don't want to hear, you know, what's up? What are you guys drinking? It's like, bro, what do you mean? It's like I'm listening to this 11 a.m., right? So um, so if you're going to record a set live, um, I think the easiest way would just be to hook your mic up through your external mixer. So you have your mic hooked up through the external mixer. And then um, then you just hit the record button in Serato and then you're good. You're going to have only audio. Um, you can also record out from the external as well. Um, and then, uh, you can cut out the mic or, you know, do anything you want. You're going to have everything on separate channels. So that would be like the professional way to do it. But I think, you know, the musical sound just as great, you know, just record on Serato if you're just looking to have the music that you play. So. This dude said, I'll write a song for some ribeye. <laughs> Oh, record the video. There's a way to do it in here. Uh, I think it's the button. There's a button right on top where you hit record, and then it records the video uh, within Ecamm Live, so you can. So afterwards, it'll it'll process as an MP4 and stuff. That's crazy. Oh, and by the way, if you don't subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. I just hit a big 2K. I'm so proud of myself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm building it all up. So if you guys don't subscribe already, I'll be, you know, I post a video every Thursday. i um, going to be doing more. I got a lot of different ideas. So I'm going to be doing sporadic videos during the week, but there will be a video every Thursday no matter what. And then whatever else I kind of put together as, you know, as I'm kind of working in here. Um, uh, like and share this too and all that stuff, you know, kind of help out my algorithms. Uh, if you didn't like this live stream, make sure you dislike it. All right. All right. If one of you eight, if one of you eight fuckers are watching this shit right now. Okay. Don't forget to hit the dislike. Okay. Can't wait to see it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. I was hype. I drank a white claw on celebration. I really did. I was, I was, I was hype to, to, to K. I started, I honestly, I started this channel. I started posting steady on this channel. August 1st was like when I really started the channel. It was funny, like two weeks after I started, I like posted like one or two videos. And then, um, and that's when I really like met and talked to like Rick Webb and DJ Barr. I seen him at the expo that year and we were all kicking it and stuff. And that's where I kind of got to know them. And they gave me a lot of really good advice. And they're like, yeah, you know, it's a long road, but you know, keep it up. And yada, yada, yada. And, uh, and yeah, and here I am less than a year later, you know, 2K. So it's cool. So I'm just going to keep this going and, um, you know, trying to keep, putting out videos that have a lot of value and you guys can actually use and you know, whatnot, you know? So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. J book loves dislikes, right? Rick J book. Who that? I don't know. That is see, I guess I would know these inside jokes if I was invited to like the Wednesday night powwow, but I don't know shit about any of this YouTube drama or anything. So, you know, he was clout chasing. See, I don't know anything about any of that. Oh, you're talking about me. Go fuck yourself, Rick. Help me. Rick is such a pain in my dick. Like a fucking North Carolina prick. Hey, hey, hey. All 
right, I'm done. I'm really done. I got to get the fuck out. I'm literally making parody songs. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. People are going to watch this back be like, what the fuck was Nick doing? Holy shit. I expect a video every Thursday and we got this. We got this shit. This dude's just singing on piano all of a sudden. Like, what the fuck? No. No request for you, Rick. No request. No request until I get invited to the Wednesday night powwow. All right? You're dead to me until I get invited to the Wednesday night powwow. You're dead to me. Going to the face camera. You're dead to me. All right, guys. Seriously, thank you all for watching. It was crazy. It was 34 people. That's solid. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to be posting this too, so you can watch it back, take any notes or anything that I talked about. You'll kind of see everything there. And um, keep your eyes peeled, people. Lots of stuff on the way. Um, lots of stuff in the workings. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon. Bye.